Shauna here. In this video, you're gonna meet my Uncle Bobby. He had a cardiac ablation done and I asked him if he would be okay with sharing his experience with us. I wasn't able to go to the hospital and record for him, so he did the best he could to record. When he remembered, he kind of, ex so he explains a little bit of his diagnosis. He explains the process of a cardiac ablation. He also does go into a little detail about his surgery that he had when he was four and then again at 13. We hope this video helps anyone who may be going through a cardiac ablation understand from a patient side what may occur and what to expect. If you could just give this video a like and subscribe down below. And now we're gonna go meet my Uncle Bobby. Uh, my name's Bob, uh, my niece Shauna asked me to contribute here when it's uh, usually is on here with the kids. I am having a cardiac ablation for the second time. Here at the hospital having fun, a couple IVs in, actually one in. The other one didn't work so well, but uh, they'll take care of that when I'm out apparently. So the cardiac ablation, they're trying to get my heart back into rhythm. I have atrial flutter similar to AFib but on the other side of the heart. They go up and with a catheter and cauterize different points in the heart to try and stop the uh, irregular heartbeat and get it back into rhythm. Kind of like misfiring I guess I would say. Last time they did 44 different spots. Started in one area in the heart all in the same upper right chamber and then found a different spot where they had to work on and they got it done. So it's back. That was not this September but the previous September and uh, we're going back in to try and do it again. Just waiting, have had my EKG and all that fun stuff. If you can see it in the thing, 96, that's my heart rate. Last time it was in the hundreds, very erratic. So we'll see how it all rolls. Hello again, this is after my procedure. It took about two and a half hours. The doctor says that he was happy with it and that it was successful. And you notice I'm on my side. I am laying down. I have to lay down for about two, two and a half hours, something like that, afterwards, because I went in through the groin. Basically, about 5.30 tonight, I'll be able to sit up and hopefully uh, be about the time for dinner. The biggest trouble I had was uh, the IVs. You'll notice this one's gone. Well... It decided to occlude while I was in the procedure, or before the procedure, as they were starting to put stuff into it. And then the hand where they tried three times, they got one in right on the knuckle. Pretty sweet. Yeah, loved it. It worked. And they did the rest through the catheter that they went up into the heart with. I'm actually waiting to hear and talk to the doctor because he's in another procedure. My understanding is he started in the right atrium, where we needed to, fixed some there, realized, well, maybe we need to go to the left atrium, went through the wall, and I actually have a diagram patch from a previous open heart surgery, my second one, and went over there, did some, and then ended up right back where they ended up last time, from what my father was telling me, because he actually talked to him on the phone. My heart rate, the last time I looked, was right around 70. My blood pressure's been coming up, which is good, and uh, that's all. So the next part I didn't think about was um, this time they didn't put me as far under as they did the previous time. They didn't completely knock me out last time. They were a little worried about how I reacted with how difficult it was to get the uh, tube in my throat. When they knock you out completely, they have to do that. So this time they kept me a little more under than you would have for like a colonoscopy, but a little less under than it was, you know, the previous time, and that completely knocked out. I did wake up during the procedure. Mostly I was pretty comfortable. Uh, the biggest thing was I actually had this pain in my shoulder, and they said, oh, that's normal from while you're having the procedure done, and uh, just kept plugging away pretty much it. It was a little freaky waking up during it, but, uh, you know, I was able to stay calm, but you ask my niece, I'm pretty calm. <laughs> I remember last time I had some groin pain from it. I'm not feeling that this time. Also, last time they had put one 
in the uh, inside of the elbow. They didn't do that this time. And they blew the vein out. And I actually couldn't move my arm, and being my only good arm, that was an issue where my uh, father actually had to feed me. I think that's it for now. Hello again. So I um, got to talk to the PA. The doctor was unable to come up, but he explained. She explained a little more. The doctor went in the right upper atrium in my heart, where he started last time, because that's where flutter usually is. Fib is usually on the left. Flutter's on the right most of the time. Went in there, worked on a few things, similar areas to what we did last time. Then he decided to go over to the left side of the heart, which they go through the wall of the heart into the left upper chamber. And in there, looked around, found there was no other scar tissue, didn't find any irregular rhythm in there. On the left side, went back to the right side. They uh, just went through, basically went around in similar areas they did last time and uh, straightened out the irregular heartbeat rhythm and felt pretty confident that it should be done. Fingers are crossed. Hopefully that's the last one I have to do. Just because I kind of mentioned the diachrom patch that I have. Um, when I was four, I had open heart surgery done. If they hadn't done it then, it was about the, the hole in the upper two chambers, the uh, upper two atria. It was about the size of a half dollar. When you're four, well, at whatever age you are, usually the size of your fist is the size of your heart. And when you're four and it's the size of a half dollar, that's huge. Um, they had to fix mine when I was that young, otherwise I wouldn't have made it to the age of 12. When I was a young teen, around 13, I was on a trip and I felt some pain in my chest. And it went away, and being a stupid teenager, I just said, eh, it went away, it's all good. I went to see the cardiologist on my regular checkup. And he goes, so uh, did you feel any pain? And I said, yeah. He goes, you yeah, need to tell me about that stuff. Ultimately, ended up doing some testing, made sure it was the sutures and not the um, muscle that tore, because that would have been a completely different problem. Went and had uh, open heart surgery for that when I was around 14. They did a diachrom patch, because in the time of opening me up, they actually cut into my heart, because my heart was so swollen. Did an emergency bypass because of that. Saved my life. And then, um, put in the diachrom patch, and then uh, my lungs had collapsed during that surgery. Um, so that was kind of a long road that time, and uh, we just continue to keep pushing forward. I've got the IV out. Just one other thing I was going to mention, I'm getting ready to go home. So after the procedure, they had me lay flat for about two and a half hours so that the groin wouldn't start bleeding where they put the... Uh, the site where they went in to do the stuff. About 5.30 last night, I was able to sit up and pretty much do whatever, you know, no running around or dancing. It was about 6.45. I decided I could uh, try and go to the bathroom, walked into the restroom. My dad was still here. While I was in there, I started bleeding. The nurses came in, had to put pressure on it. it stopped bleeding, put a new bandage on it. Um, I got it handled pretty well. They had to hold pressure there for a good 15 minutes. And then they had me laying down again for another an hour and a half before I could uh, sit up again. And then uh, had a sandbag on it, uh, which is pretty heavy. They always worry that it's uncomfortable, but it didn't bother me. Everything's going well now. So like I said, getting ready to go home, and my regular street clothes, and uh, ready to roll when my ride gets here. Thank you for listening. I hope this helps anyone.